All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with an archetypal postural squat. This is gonna help with opening up and strengthening your hips, okay? So let's take a nice wide stance. My feet are in a turned out position wider than my shoulders, about a 45 degree angle. We're gonna try to keep our torso relatively upright, but it will bow forward a little bit. And we're gonna get as low as we can. You may not get as low as I'm gonna demonstrate here on this first one, but we wanna get as low as we can. For those of you who are familiar with our work in class, we want this to feel similar to a moon box squat. So this pose is what uh, really inspired a moon box squat. So I wanna find equal weight on the soles of the feet. We wanna to try to find a flat back and open collarbones. My hands are really imprinting in, keep holding down there. My hands are really imprinting in to activate the middle back and we're not hanging into the hips. So it shouldn't feel like a slouch or a hang like this. It should really feel like an active hold, more like this. If it's not accessible to you to have your feet flat, you can always come up onto the balls of the feet and even put you know, a rolled up blanket or yoga mat under your heels if that's better for you. Let's go for five more seconds. Let's go for four, three, don't go anywhere with control. Inhale, slowly load the soles of the feet evenly as we gather and rise all the way back to standing. Good news, we're gonna do it again, but we're gonna do it slowly together. Here we go. Exhale, lower down about two inches. Hold and breathe. Make sure you have equal weight across the soles of the feet. Exhale again, lower down half an inch. You should feel a lot of deep abdominal activation because you're bowed forward a tiny bit. Lower down two and a half more inches. Sitting bones are very broad. Inner thighs are spiraling to the sky. Knees are aligned, big toe, second toe. Exhale, lower down half an inch more. So if this is as low as you're going today, that's fine. If you're looking for more challenge, we're gonna keep on lowering down. Go down one more inch. Ooh, it's getting a little spicy. Make sure you're trusting your heels with the weight of your glutes. Here we go. Little bit lower. Hold and breathe, we're not all the way down yet. Equal weight, soles of feet, find the knees aligned, big toe, second toe. Go down a little bit lower. We're not quite there yet. My elbows aren't touching the inner thighs. Oh my gosh, you guys, here we go. A little bit lower. At the bottom of your squat for five, four, three. Don't go anywhere fast. We're gonna rise up about two inches. Oh my gosh, it's really tough for me too, guys. Here we go. Let's rise up one more inch. Equal weight across the soles of the feet. Imprinting those hands to find the middle back. Raise up half an inch. Raise up half an inch more. Hold. Lengthening down a centimeter. Hold. Lengthening down a millimeter. Hold. You should feel really good shaking. Find that breath lengthening your spine as we hold. Inner thighs are spiraling. Hands are imprinting in, activating between the shoulder blades. Let's raise up one inch. You should feel the inner thighs really active as well. Broadening the sits bones, lower down half an inch. Oh my gosh, who asked for booty work? I blame you, not me. Let's raise up two inches, hold. And on our last inhale, come all the way up. Amazing. All right, let's get after it. We're gonna go into a wounded best. So we're gonna be on our hands and our feet on the floor. And we're gonna do this today with a rounded spine, okay? So we're gonna have our hands on the floor about shoulder width distance, starfish hands, right? Spread all the fingers out, really get a solid connection. Step into your best plank. Collarbones are wide, feet are four inches apart parallel. First thing we're gonna do, guys, bend the knees back. Your booty will go up, but not a lot. So the knees bend a lot, and our booty raises, but not a whole bunch. All right, we are going to keep the right leg where it is, with intention, send the hamstrings long as you reach your left leg up and back behind you. So now we're in kind of a three point pull, okay? On the exhale, lots of things are gonna happen. We're gonna nod the chin, straighten the right leg, round the spine and fold the left leg in. So this is our end. And then we're gonna inhale, unwind back to start. Left leg is long, right leg is bent, back is flat. Exhale, round. Switching which leg is bent, which leg is straight. Round, you can glance this way. This is our end position. Rounded spine, left knee bent, right leg long. And then we unwind into the diagonal. Keep working, guys. We wanna make sure that we're really active through the core the whole time. We're unwinding and curling 
the spine, keep working. We wanna keep that right knee, the standing leg, bent a lot. The higher up you go, the less effort you're gonna feel through the quads, inner thighs, hamstrings, and tush. Keep the collarbones wide. We don't wanna hang into that position at all. As we come up, find that length and lift from under the ribs. We're gonna hold the last one in that curled position, okay? So everyone meet me in that curled position. Left leg is in, right leg is on. Check in with the back side of your right knee. Make sure it's not locked. Give it a little bit of breath. Holding and breathing. We're gonna deepen the curl from under our ribs. Deepen the curl, the left leg draws in a bit more. Deepen the curl. Last two. Shift back to start. We're gonna keep the left leg long. Right knee is bent a lot. Really think about the femur sinking deeply into the pelvis for four, for three, for two, and bring both legs all the way down. Nice, you guys. All right, let's go ahead and go into a leg raise on the right. And we're going to have our left forearm down. So roll out those shoulders if you need to. We were on our uh, hands there for a minute. And we're going to bring our left forearm down onto the floor. We're going to go into a leg sweep and leg raise on the right. I like the challenge of floating my hip up. If that feels aggressive to you, simply bring your hip back down to the floor at any time. All right, here we go. Hips are stacked. Pelvis is neutral. So don't let your belly fold in as we hold this pose. Lengthen and reach. Okay, guys, we are going to... Flex the right foot so the heel is reaching long, inner thighs reach longer than the legs. Flex and lengthen the leg all the way up. You should feel really nice activation through the outer thigh. Think about your inner thigh lifting. Find that inner thigh connection as well. All right, here we go. We are going to sweep the leg forward as the front side of the ankle opens, just like if we had our foot in a strap. And then we're going to lengthen the leg back, flexing the foot. Inhale, front side of the ankle opens. Exhale as we bring it back. Keep working. I'm going to show you from a standing position what the ideal pelvis orientation is going to be. So keep working on your side. As the leg comes forward, don't send it so far forward that you roll your tailbone under you like this. We want to maintain neutral. So I don't care how far the leg travels. I care that your core stays engaged. And then we flex and send the leg back from the glam line. Inhale, front side of the ankle opens. Exhale, bring it back. We're going to hold the next one out at the diagonal. I don't care how far it is again. So we're holding the next one. Leg is out. Here we're going to get some major glute me, glute min activation. Ready? Front side of the ankle is open. Inner thigh spins back. Woo! You should already feel that lighting up. Make sure your hips stay stacked. Your toes might have dipped. It doesn't have to be a great range of movement. And then we're going to go down and up just a few inches. Inner thigh is spiraling back behind you. Lifting off of the shoulder if it's aggressive on the neck. Look down towards the mat. Last four. Small range of movement. Keep the hips stacked. Last three. This is two. Last one. And bring the hip all the way down. All right. Let's go ahead and go into some arm arcs. If you have dumbbells or a band, this is a great time to grab them. Okay. So we're going to lay all the way down on your backs. If you have the dumbbells, go ahead and grab them. If not, empty hands work just fine. We're going to be in a neutral pelvis, so make sure your, your ASIS, your front sticky outy bits, are shining straight to the sky. Tailbone is heavy. Float both legs up, thinking about the abdominals doing that lift, so it shouldn't feel like a grip on the front side of the hips. We're going to think about that beach towel underneath us, lengthening and floating the back side of the head up so you can feel the neck really drawing all the way down into the abdominals to pick the head up. Here we go. Arms go long, up towards the sky. Plug them into the middle back. We're going to inhale as we deepen that curl, picking up our shoulder blades off the floor. Arms go long. Exhale as we bring it back. Try not to set your head down. Hold that abdominal curl, if you can, the whole time today. Exhale as we bring it back. So you don't have to have those dumbbells. You can use wine bottles, soup cans, or a resistance band in your hand as well. I'd like you to focus. Keep working on your movement. I'd like you to focus on the femur heads sinking down. I want you to find that downward sensation so that the femur head, the thigh bone, is sinking into the dome of the pelvis and the tailbone is heavy. I like to think about space between my navel and my pubic bone while I'm in that orientation and it really helps me to activate low belly while we're working. 
Let's hold the next one with the arms at about a 45 degree angle. So the legs are in our tabletop, holding the arms at a 45 degree angle. From here, if your head, neck, and shoulders are still up, that's great. We're gonna do a small reach and bring it back to 45 degrees. So I don't have anything in my hands. I don't have any props at all. I'm getting major tricep and middle back activation because I'm imagining really sending like maybe a big old bucket of peanut butter down. So I'm not just kind of flapping the arms around like this. It's a really sincere intention for length and in resistance. So it's not just moving the arms around. Here we go for three. This is two, find length on the front side of the body the whole time. This is one, hold the arms down, holding and breathing. We're gonna lengthen the right leg and bring it in. Lengthen the left leg and bring it in. Lengthen the right, in, left, in. Let's go, picking up the pace, out and in, with control. Femur head sinks in every time. Pelvis is level, five, four, three, two, this is our last one, both legs in with control, head unwinds with control, feet lower down. All right, let's get that wind vest handled on the other side. So we're going to come onto our hands and our feet, hands are four inches, of, or uh, shoulder width distance rather, all the way at the top of the mat, feet are four inches apart parallel, top of a plank. We are going to first thing bend both knees a lot. Booty raises, but it doesn't hike way up. So glance at the screen. Make sure your knees are bent really generously and the front side of the hips have a deep crease. Holding that, broaden the collarbones on an inhale and reach the right leg up and back behind you. We're doing this in flexion today. So on that exhale, we're going to nod the chin, look back at the left knee, round the spine, left leg lengthens, right knee draws in, and we deeply curl the spine. That's an exhale. Inhale, as you unwind back to start, back is flat, left knee is bent, right leg is straight. Exhale, round it in. Inhale, reach and extend. You should feel a lot of activation through that back leg, keep working. I know that the quads wanna take over on that left side, so really deep, deeply creasing, crease at the hip as you bring it back to find that connection. Maybe lower your heel a teeny tiny touch. That's gonna to help you activate and share the work with the back line of the body. And the gesture leg, the one that's moving in and out, really think about that glam line creasing as your leg reaches. And that's gonna help you find the focus of the booty work on that right leg while we're coming in and out. Let's hold this next one in, guys. So we're gonna hold the next one with the left leg long, right knee bent a lot, and we're going to that deepening of the curl. Deepening of the curl. Think about a hammock under the ribs. Think about softening the right knee, or left knee rather, just a little bit. Last two. Last one. And with control, bring it all the way down. Okay? Throw all those shoulders and get that leg lift, leg sweep done on the left. So our right forearm comes down onto the floor. You can keep your right hip on the floor or for additional balance and stamina challenge, right hip comes up. First thing we're going to do, we are going to float the left leg up and flex the foot a lot. That's gonna help us activate through the back line of that leg. From here, we're going to inhale as the leg sweeps forward, crease deeply at the hip, and then exhale, flex the foot as you bring it back in line with the pelvis. Again, like on the other side, we're not asking the leg to go so far that the pelvis rolls under us like this. That's not what we want. We want to stay organized and lifted the whole time. It's never about the distance travel, guys. It's about that journey, right? So we're finding that activation and the quality of movement, not the range of movement, right? Inhale as we lengthen. Exhale today as we reach back. Let's go for two more here. We're lifting up and off that right shoulder. We're not letting the bottom ribs drop towards the floor. You might feel some heat in that outer thigh and the bottom leg too if you have that hip raised. Next one, we're gonna hold it out, guys. We're gonna hold it out. Inner thigh rotates back. Whew, that is a burner. Stack the hips, make sure that front hip doesn't go forward when you do that. Little lift here. Find length in the spine. Make sure the ribs don't drop. Reach the tailbone from the crown of the head as we're doing that little lift, glute knee, glute min. Last four. The 
this is three, we've got a bridge coming up in two, last one, and bring the leg and hip all the way down. Okay guys, let's go right into that bridge. So we are going to bring ourselves onto our backs, arms are long at our sides to start with, feet are going to be four inches apart, parallel. From here, make sure you have enough room for your knees that they don't feel crowded when we lift the pelvis up. We're going to start with a few lifts, really activating how we find the low belly and the glutes and hamstrings, okay? So I'm going to move my hands just so you can see you keep yours down. What we're going to do is maintain neutral and we are going to float just the fabric of our pants off the floor. So it might really not look like a big change on your end, that's okay. You should feel major activation for your transverse abdominis, it's like a diamond. You're going to feel activated on the front side of your body. Keep that little hover. And if you can, see if you can wrap it all the way around. It goes all the way around to the back side. You can think about it like saran wrap around the body. So you should feel major glutes, major hamstrings. If you've got the big toe, second toe connected, you'll feel inner thigh, yeah? And then we're going to feel that deep abdominal while we do that little hover. Now let's go ahead and set it back down. So if you're glancing at the screen, guys, notice that you're probably not really seeing any light between the floor and my touch. So that's how we're finding that activation of the core. It's never just a leg exercise or just an arm exercise or just a booty exercise. So at your own pace, we're doing a quick release down and then we're doing a hover of the fabric of the pants. My knees wanted to tip outbound. So really keep everything organized, even when it's a small range of movement. Find that wrap all the way around on this next one. Now we're gonna continue recruiting those glutes to send the hips all the way up into the top of your bridge. All right, we're gonna go into a little cross diagonal training. Here's what's gonna happen. As the left inner thigh picks up the left heel, my right arm is gonna move too. So this is what it's gonna look like. Left inner thigh picked up the left heel as I brought the right arm all the way behind me onto the floor. If that's not for your shoulder, do whatever works for you and bring it all the way down. Now I'm gonna ask the right inner thigh to pick the heel up and the left arm sweeps back and then bring it to start. So keep working at your own pace. Pick up the heel, the opposite arm reaches behind you, melt the shoulder blade down to do so, arm goes back. Pelvis doesn't tip side to side, guys. That's how we're gonna access that deep abdominal connection. Reach your tailbone long. Try not to shorten the low back at all. Keep marching in place. Little heel raise, opposite arm, bring it back down. So we're mobilizing our scapula. That's the fancy word for shoulder blade. We're mobilizing our shoulders, which in turn helps us with so many functions of the body, the head, neck, and shoulders, and arms. We need to remember our arms go over our head. We just have them at our sides so much of the time. So arms go over the head. Bring it down once you're even. Hold at the top of that bridge. Are you still feeling the glutes lifting the pelvis? The hamstrings should not be cramping like crazy. If they are, you've lost the connection we found to the deep abdominals and to the glutes. Find the length, so as drawing up tailbone, reaching long. Here we go, guys. We're gonna bring both heels up, both arms up. Here we go, exhale to prepare. Inhale, both heels come up. Keep big toe, second toe connected. Arms come on the floor behind you. Remember, we're going through molasses with those arms as we bring it back down, heels come down. Inhale, as we lift and bring it up, keep the glutes lifting the pelvis, not just the hamstrings, holding on for dear life through molasses or peanut butter with those arms. Lengthen as the arms reach, heels raise, shoulder blades melt down. Exhale, bring the arms long to the sides. Here we go, last one. Inhale, bring it up. I'd like you to keep the heels up. Arms come long to the sides, little lower, crease at the front side of the hips, and lift. So the heels are raised. If that's aggressive, put your heels down. Keep all 10 toes imprinting into the floor. Even if your heels are up, can you find an imaginary stack of marshmallows? Oh my gosh, I just totally started shaking when I found that in my own body. So really think about those marshmallows under your heels, even though they're in free space, they should be supporting your body. Last two, little tiny lift at the top. Use the deep abdominals to assist you. Holding it all the way up at the top, hold and breathe for five, four, get those marshmallows under the heels, find the glutes, 
heels melt down and hinge the body all the way back to the floor. All right, gorgeous job, you guys. Let's go ahead and go into a froggy um, knee hold. So it's going to be on our hands, similar to how we would do with our hands on the foot bar or on the chair if we're on the machine. So hands go shoulder width distance, and we're going to step back into a plank. Oh, my booty really is feeling that bridge. I'm guessing yours does too. Step all the way back. Heels are glued together. Toes are turned out at about a 45 degree angle. Find the space between your shoulder blades. We're never hanging in the shoulders. Keep your heels glued together. It's going to help you find inner thigh, low belly. That's a good bonus, right? Exhale, soften the knees. Think about that seat belt under your hips, dragging you back. And then we're going to exhale and bring it forward. So today I'm asking for length. On the inhale, think about the pelvis reaching back first. It's going to go up a tiny, but not a lot. Inhaling back, exhaling forward. Inner thighs spiral forward. Think about your elbows drawing towards your, uh, your knees rather, drawing towards your elbows, not your wrists. So I'm going to say that again. As we bend back, think about your knees aiming towards your elbows, not your wrists. That's going to help you find the bone rhythm, keep working, of the inner thigh spiraling forward as the leg bends. So we don't want the knees to point down. We want the inner thighs to open and the knees go towards the elbows. They're not going to touch, they're not going to get anywhere near there, but that's the general trajectory rather than down towards the wrist, okay? Let's go ahead and hold the next one back. Hold it back. Really magnetize those heels. We're going to explore that together. Go ahead and release the heels. Do you feel the inner thighs check out a little bit? And go ahead and magnetize the heels together. Think about the sitting bones broad. Think about the collarbones wide for five, four, three, two, and bring the knees all the way down. All right, guys, let's go ahead and go into a low lunge. So the idea here is we're gonna keep the movement quite small and we're gonna get a lot of effort through that page. So bring the left knee down or left knee stays down and the right foot comes forward. The pelvis is level. Think about that femur bone, the right femur bone sinking deeply inside of that pelvis, okay? Flip the toes under on the left foot. So now we have our torso as upright as we can, and we're gonna think about a small lift, maybe two to three inches, and bring it back down. You're gonna feel a nice stretch probably on the front side of the left leg too. And we're gonna pick it up and set it back down. We're only doing eight, that was two. Really find weight in the entire sole of the right foot, okay? Weight in the entire sole of the right foot. We don't want only the quads to take over. You can think about the inner thighs, that was four. Inhale as you pick up. This is five, we only have three more, guys. This is six, you have two more. Find that breath. Inhale to raise just a few inches. Exhale down. Good news, so this is our eighth one. We're gonna come all the way up. So come all the way up into your lunge. And we're gonna bring the left foot forward just a little bit. And now we're gonna go from the top down. So it's going to be a small lunge. Let's bring the arms up and out of the V. Small lunge and then lift. So now we're accessing not only through the glutes, but I want you to feel that eccentric work, which means working on length for the hamstrings, okay? That translates also up into the glutes. So as we do this small bend, knee comes in front of the ankle crease, but it's a very shallow bend. Feel this length, keep working. Feel this length. You're stretching the glute muscles. You're stretching the hamstrings. You're stretching everything as we bend over that hip joint, and then we're gathering with our breath to lift back up. So it should feel pretty shaky. Don't just kind of bounce in it like this. You're gonna check out of all of the effort. So really find that resistance to lower down, and then the breath assists you to come up. Let's go for two more here. Arms come up overhead. That's gonna help us with cardio effort. Mobilizing the scapula again. Hold the next one with two straight legs. Hold, balance challenge. We are going to float the right heel up off the floor as well. Last set here, we're going to exhale, both knees bend, rotate to the right like so. And then bring it back up two straight legs at the top. Imagine that marshmallow stack under your right heel, guys. So we still wanna find that connection of the back line of the leg. 
Inhale to come up. If this balance challenge is not for you, right foot can be flat. Exhale as we rotate and lower down. Inhale as we bring it up. Let's go for two more here. Exhaling as we lower down. Inhale as we bring it up. This is gonna be our last one. Hold and breathe. Just find your breath, find your balance. Glue your eyes to something ahead of you. Plug the arms into the middle back. Lower down a few more inches. Really find that challenge, find that marshmallow stack underneath the right heel for three, for two. Heel goes down with intention. Unwind the torso and rise all the way back up to the top. Okay, we're gonna go into a squat with gait. So we started with that archetypal squat all the way to the floor. This time we're gonna focus on functionality of our ankles, which improves functionality of our hips. So come with your big toes and your knees together. In my body, you'll see there's a little gap between my knees because that's how my legs go. So don't worry about mashing things together. You just want the idea of everything coming towards the center, okay? Now we're gonna exhale, crease at the hips, and we're just gonna do one glorious squat here. So keep the outer thighs magnetized, your squat is nice and deep, and make sure the ribs are stacked in line with the pelvis. We don't wanna look like this, okay? So really draw the psoas, the abdominals up as the tailbone reaches long. Here we go. Gate means I'm gonna ask you to open the front side of the right ankle completely. So just like when we were doing those leg sweeps, see how there's no more crease at the front side of the ankle? That is full talus glide. That means opening your ankle in Pilates terms. With intention, imprint that heel all the way back down to the floor. The outer thighs are still coming in. The spine is still reaching long. Left inner thigh picks the heel all the way up. Open the front side of the ankle, but the pelvis didn't rock at all. Imprint that heel all the way back down. The bone reaches through the floor. Right heel picks up. All 10 toes are melting into the floor and the left heel. Now, if you're up for it, you can alternate the feet in midair. You might need to touch onto something nearby, a counter, a wall, a chair, something of the sort. To assist you with your balance, you might be able to do it without a balance support and you might choose to do it one foot is all the way down before the next comes up. Pay attention to your body. But I want that deep glute activation as the heel bone reaches through the floor, the muscle pants draw up, and then the foot that's going down bound is going through a stack of marshmallows as we open the front side of the other ankle. Keep that pelvis level, keep working guys. As we start to alternate the feet, we can kind of want to belly dance like this. Try to resist that. Think about your belt line staying level while all the action is happening below the belt line. Don't go there. I just went through the ankles. All right, let's go for two more. We're gonna hold the heels up halfway. So now we're in a halfway range of movement. If you are not shaking, lower your heels a millimeter. Raise them a centimeter. Lower half an inch. Find your shaky spot. Navel draws up and in between the shoulder blades. Hold and breathe. Arms come up and out. Bring them alongside the ears like we did with the bridge. Melt the shoulder blades down. Think about sitting about half an inch further back, not down, for five. Navel draws up and in for four, three, two. Heels go down. Inhale, gather, rise up. Okay, guys, low lunge, other side. This is our last little circuit and we're done for the day. Left foot is forward, right knee is bent, right toes are flipped under, pelvis is level. Eight times only, let's do it. All right, here we go. Upper inner thighs narrow, lift off the floor, just two inches. Whoo, that first one hurts already, doesn't it? Bring it back down. Here's two. And think about that left sitting bone drawing down. Here's three. Belt line stays level. These are wicked hard, I know guys, I'm right there with you. Entire sole of that left foot melts down. My toes really wanna to pick up, try not to allow that to happen. Think about deeply creasing at the front side of the left hip. We have three more. You got this gang, we got two. Stay with me, upper inner thighs. Assist us with our breath to lift. This is our last one, we're going all the way up. Inhale, rise all the way up. At the top, the right foot glides forward just a few inches. Now we're going top down. Here we go. 
small range of movement and bring it back up. I'm pretty sure you can see me shaking like crazy. This is the goal because I want you to think about your head tracking up as you bend your left knee. So if you can find that oppositional reach, the spine and the breath are going upbound because we exhaled and then we inhale and we stabilize with our breath. Exhale, think about that lift, eccentrically working the back side of that left leg. Exhale, down, just a few more here. We're gonna go to that balance challenge. Hold the next one with the baby bend. You should be shaking, shaking, shaking. Left inner thigh kicks the left heel up. Arms float out to the sides. Rotate to the left. Inhale, rib basket rotates. Exhale, bring it back to start. Inhale, I like to think of a spiral staircase with my breath. Exhale, base of the ribs returns you to start. Can you get a little bit lower now in that lunge? Inhale as you rotate. Exhale, woo, bring it back to start. Two more here. Inhale as we rotate. Try to keep that belt line level. My left hip was hiking up. Try to keep your belt line level. Hold your rotation, guys. Really find that balance challenge. Get a little bit lower. Drop down about two inches. Feel that femur head sinking deeply for three, for two. Heel goes down with intention. Torso unwinds with intention. Inhale, gather, and rise all the way up. You're amazing. We did it. Let's stretch, all right? So we're going to come onto our side today. I'm going to ask you to go into a half lotus position. Left knee comes in front of the right. Both legs are bent a lot. We're going to load the weight into the left arm and come up and off the left hip. So it's going to look like this as we stretch through the side body. Nice deep breath here. Just hold and breathe today. Thinking about opening through the hips, through the side of the body. Try not to lock the standing elbow. And go ahead and unwind. We're gonna do a little child's pose through the center. So we're gonna stay down here on the floor. Big toes touch, knees go wide. I don't care if your hips go down to your heels. Pay attention to your knees and your body. We're just trying to find openness through the hips, really releasing through the glutes and the low back. You can give it a little rotation here. It's gonna stretch through the low back. And you can rotate the other side. Got a little few cricks and cracks in there. And we're going to come onto the other side of the body. Right knee comes in front of the left leg. We're going to come up and off of that right hip, stretching through the side body, opening through the lateral line through the front side of the hip. Try not to lock into that standing elbow and shoulder. Nice deep breath here, guys. And go ahead and unwind. You did it. Thanks for working that booty with me and everything else too. I will see you tomorrow.